The second piece of news that we can't let go is Marco Rubio's energy plan. He's one of the leading candidates for president on the Republican side. Uh, below Trump, below Fiorina, below Carson, but of the establishment candidates, of the traditional politicians, he's on top. And a lot of people think he could bridge the divide between the establishment and the anti-establishment. He could be the nominee. So what he has to say really matters. He announced his energy plan. What's in it? Well, not a lot you're going to like if you support the Democratic uh, energy plans. He is in favor of building the Keystone Pipeline. He would put Congress in charge of international treaties, like the one likely to be signed in Paris next, uh, next month, lowering global carbon emissions. He would put that in, in control of Congress, not the President. He would also do away with President Obama's historic clean power plan, the first plan ever to cap carbon emissions in the U.S. He would expand oil and gas drilling in America, very controversial move. And he would also end the export ban, which means uh, America's oil boom would only get bigger. We wouldn't only be selling to ourselves, we'd be able to export, something we haven't been able to do for decades. Now, will Rubio's plan resonate with voters? To, remains to be seen. One countervailing force, Tom Steyer, the, the green billionaire who's supporting uh, 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 energy plans that, that promise to bring America 50% uh, renewable energy by 2030, he's launched a massive national advertising campaign targeting Rubio in particular and asking him to step up his commitment to global warming. Will it matter? Will that resonate with voters? Could that be a countervailing force against Rubio? Remains to be seen.